Genius Authors, I'm Bryn Donovan, acquiring editor by day and author by night. I hope you've had a good week. I had a really nice week because I just got my latest novel, The Equinox Stone, off to final proofreading. And there is just almost no better feeling in the world, almost, than getting your manuscript off to the proofreader and knowing you made it the best that you could make it. It's such a great feeling. It's the feeling that I want you to have, and that's kind of why I'm doing this program, like page to final draft. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe, and it is a great way to stay focused on your writing success. If you are following the program, I hope you hit your weekly word count goal. You might be going a little faster or a little slower, and that is totally fine. If you are going a little slower, you might want to think about what's hanging you up in your life or in your mind. If you need to make a mental adjustment or a scheduling adjustment that can help you out a little bit more. But in any case, it really doesn't matter. You can go at your own pace. It's nobody's business but yours. As long as you're moving forward, you should feel really good about your success. So this week, I am going to talk a little bit about common questions people have about dialogue. Writing dialogue is a lot of writers' favorite thing to write, and at the same time, a lot of questions come up that I want to address. And one question that I hear a lot is, how do I avoid using the word said over and over again? So here's what happens. A writer is writing a long conversation, and down the page it's he said, she said, he said, they said if they have a non-binary character, but it's said, said, said all the way down that page and it really bugs them and with good reason because it gets repetitive and kind of awkward. I'm gonna tell you first how not to solve this problem. And that is using synonyms for said. This is what a lot of beginning writers will do. Instead of saying said, they'll say he announced, she stated, he declared, etc. And this is absolutely the wrong way to go. It will make your writing sound amateurish and it will slow down the read. A lot of times when we use synonyms for said, we're giving the reader information that they already have. In other words, we'll write something like, a storm is coming, she observed. Well, we can tell that's an observation. We didn't really need that clarification. Or, my soup's cold, he complained. We can tell that's a complaint. Most of the time, said is the right word to use, unless it's a question, in which case we say asked. Not queried, not questioned, but asked. And the reason for this is that the reader just glides on by the words said and asked. They don't even really think about them. And so it doesn't slow down the read. Okay, but if said is our default, said and asked, how do we avoid repeating them over and over? a few ways. First of all, keep in mind that not every line of dialogue needs to be tagged or attributed. If you have two people talking and they're talking back and forth, you don't have to have a he said or a she said attached to every one of them. Now you can go back maybe three times and the reader will know who's saying what. If you go further than that, then sometimes the reader will get lost. But you can go back and forth about three times before you say he said or she said again. So that's one way we eliminate some of those. But another way we do it, and every writer needs to know this, is setting up a line of dialogue with an action or a facial expression. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have a sentence that's like, I don't want to go to the party, she said uncomfortably. I don't think I've talked yet about adverbs, and adverbs are the words that end in L-Y that modify a verb. And we don't want to use too many adverbs. It's okay to use them now and again, but we don't want to go overboard with them. So we would like to get rid of the adverb in this sentence, uncomfortably. One thing we can do is put in an action that shows that she's uncomfortable. So it might be something like this. She squirmed in her seat. I don't wanna to go to the party. Okay, here we can tell that she's the one who said, I don't wanna to go to the party because we described her action right before then. And shifting around, kind of squirming in your seat is something that people do when they're uncomfortable. 
And so instead of telling the reader that she's uncomfortable, we are creating that experience for them and that's going to set them into the story more. The action you use to set up a line of dialogue might just be a gesture. So I'll give you another example. Don't give it another thought, she said. Here we could put in a gesture and say, she waved a hand, don't give it another thought. The cool thing here is that the gesture actually tells the reader a little bit about the character's tone of voice. They infer it a little bit from the gesture. And so that's another way we can set up dialogue. The other way I wanna talk about that's really important is setting up a line of dialogue with facial expression. And so here's another example. I think you're lying, she said. Instead of that, we could say, she narrowed her eyes. I think you're lying. Now that second one carries a little bit more emotion and heightens the conflict a little bit. And then we also avoid that said. If you have trouble thinking of facial expressions, if your characters are just nodding and smiling all the time and they're not really doing much else, or if you have trouble thinking about gestures, I can help you out there. And if you haven't seen these already, you're gonna be so happy to find them. On my blog, I have two master lists for writers. One of them is all kinds of facial expressions, and one of them is all kinds of gestures and body language. And this is gonna help you out so much in writing dialogue and setting it up with action and with facial expressions. So go ahead and check those out. I will put the links below. One of the great things about using facial expressions or actions to set up lines of dialogue is we avoid what I call floating head syndrome. This happens a lot in a first draft. You'll have a really long conversation and it's just trading lines of dialogue back and forth. And we don't really see what the characters are doing or their expressions and we're not getting much about the setting so really it may as well be like two floating heads talking to each other. Very common in a first draft. I do it too, and it's nothing to worry about in a first draft. When we go in later, we can fill it in with action, with details that ground them in the setting and so on. But one thing I want you to think about too is giving your characters something to do while they're talking. So it's okay if you have a few scenes where characters are just sitting and talking to each other, but it can be a lot more fun if you give them another action to do as they're talking about it. Even if someone's just emptying the dishwasher or folding laundry, it still can make it a better scene. And I have another blog post for you, which is a bunch of ideas for things that characters can be doing as they're carrying on a conversation. Okay, another question people have sometimes is how to write a character with an accent. And the short answer to this is don't overdo it. In other words, don't spell everything out phonetically. That's gonna be very difficult for your reader to even read and they're gonna get really annoyed with you really fast if you try to spell everything out phonetically. In some cases, you might just mention that the character has an accent. If they have a heavy accent, you might choose a couple of words or a couple of phrases that you use fairly consistently that convey that accent. If you Google common mistakes that someone from a native language makes, you can get some great ideas. For instance, Google common mistakes Japanese speakers make in English, and you'll get a bunch of good ideas. But the reason we don't wanna overdo it is because it slows down the read, and also sometimes it can seem kind of stereotypical or even insulting. So we always want to keep that really low key. And the same thing goes for a speech impediment or something like that. For instance, if your character has a lisp, probably all you have to do is say once that that character has a lisp. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that different characters speak differently. Just as the different people you know in your life have different speech patterns and different favorite words and phrases, this is gonna be true of your characters and stories too. And if now and then also in revision, you pay attention to the different ways your characters talk, they're really gonna emerge more as individuals and as real flesh and blood characters that people know. 
Now, a lot of writers like to talk about the differences between how men talk and how women talk. Personally, I feel like the way people talk varies so much from individual to individual that those generalizations about gender aren't actually all that helpful. Anyway, if you're writing fantasy or science fiction, you've created a different culture or a different society where those things might not even apply anyway. But you do want to pay attention to how each individual talks. Some people are more talkative in general than others. Uh, some people will speak more bluntly and directly, whereas other people will be a little more polite and roundabout in the way they express themselves. In my book, The Phoenix Codex, Cassie swears like a sailor, but Jonathan very rarely curses. So you'll want to pay attention to some of those nuances and then your characters are going to feel much more real to your reader. Your character may have a phrase that they use a few times in a story. Now you don't want to them to have a catchphrase that they use in every chapter because that'll seem really hokey and obvious and readers will uh, get tired of it. But if your character uses the same phrase twice, or three times in the story, spread out at intervals, uh, that's a great way of conveying their voice. Okay, if you're doing the blank page to final draft program, I hope you hit your weekly word count goal. If you want to tell me how it's going, just chat about it, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear. And if you have questions about dialogue, please ask those below too. It's a really fun and complicated topic and I love talking about it. Oh, go ahead and give the video a like before you go. Hit the thumbs up so other writers can find it. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.